recording this. Okay. All right. So hope you guys are doing well. I think spring is in the corner, and I'm excited that we're hopefully getting past the uh, cold weather, and hopefully we can start thawing out of all that snow we got a couple of weeks ago. Uh, praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to First Chronicles chapter 14. First Chronicles chapter 14. I'm going to see if I can share my slide here. The Bible says in verse 8, I'm going to read from verse 8 to 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. And I want you, if you underline your Bible, if you can highlight your Bible, please do that. I want you to highlight that word. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Verse 9. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, go, I will deliver them into your hands. May the Lord answer you today as you inquire. Verse 11, let's go on. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, as the waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So the place was called Baal Perazim. Verse 12, the Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. But the story doesn't end here. Let's go on to verse 13. The Bible says, once again, once more, the Philistines raided the valley. Verse 14 says, so David inquired of God again, and God answered him. Do not go directly after them, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. Verse 15, as soon as you hear the sound of the marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. Verse 16, and so David did as God commanded him. And they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Giza. And verse 17 says, so David's fame spread throughout every land and the Lord made the nations fear him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They're going to pray this morning. The Bible says, so David's fame spread throughout every land and the lord made the nations for him you're going to pray this morning say god make me the envy of nations i don't know about you when you become a testimony people begin to look at you and they begin to envy the god that you serve begin to pray this morning say god make me the envy of nations make me a custodian of your glory we see in this text that god Gave, gave David fame throughout the land, and the Lord made the nations fear him. Your enemies will begin to fear you, not because you are stronger than they are, but because God will make himself mighty in the name of Jesus. In your family, God will make himself mighty in the name of Jesus. Make that your prayer this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Today is going to be a sermon that I'm going to take some prayer points with you. And as much as possible, please join me in faith as you take those prayer points, because these are the things that the Lord has laid in my heart this morning. I'm going to start this morning by saying, when God blesses you, when God anoints you, praise the Lord, hallelujah. When God anoints you, you not only draw the favor and the blessings of God, 
but you also draw the attention of Satan and the forces of darkness. When God blesses you, when he anoints you, you, you only just don't draw the favor of God and the blessings of God, but you also grab the attention of Satan and the forces of darkness. God used the anointing upon David's life to lure the enemy out. And sometimes when God blesses you and you see the enemy coming after you, you must be careful to take a step back. You must think maybe God, because of the anointing I carry, the enemy has been lured out so that God can destroy them for your behalf. I have a message for somebody this morning. Can you stand to be blessed? So long as, as, so long as you are not blessed, so long as you are not favored, you are not a threat to the enemy. But I have news for you this morning. God will bless you. God will begin to anoint you. But as, as he begins to bless you, as he begins, begins to increase you, as he begins to anoint you, be on the lookout because he also attracts the attention of the enemy. Your blessing will attract the eye of the enemy. It drives him crazy to see you blessed. And so Satan will come after you. Let's look at that scripture again. The Bible says in verse 8, I'm going to share my screen again. In verse 8, the Bible says, when, when the Philistines heard, when they heard that David had been anointed over all Israel, they went up in full force. They got crazy. They were upset. They came out to attack him. Why did they come out to attack him? What provoked this attack? They heard that David was anointed. Because once you are anointed of God, heaven makes an announcement that reverberates in the heavenlies. It sounds on earth. It also makes sound in the hell, in the hell places. In the demonic realms, they hear that God has blessed Pastor Abby. God has blessed Sister a, God has blessed brother B. God has blessed you. And once God blesses you, everybody begins to take notice, including demonic forces. As soon as David was anointed, they went up in full force to search for him. Don't be surprised when demons begin to search for you. But the Bible says David heard about it and went out to meet them. Hallelujah. I love the heart of David. God is speaking to one of you today, or maybe all of you. I don't know who God is speaking to this morning. Don't be afraid of the demonic forces advancing towards you. Don't be afraid of the enemy arraigned against you. If God is for you, who can be against you? The Bible says when they heard, they came out in full force. But look at David's reaction here. They were mad about David's success. The Bible says that they came out in full force, but David heard about it and went out to meet them. I have a question for you this morning. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be anointed? Can you stand to be blessed by the Lord? Don't be afraid. You must stay strong in faith. You must stand your ground. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, it says no weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. The Bible says they shall surely gather. They will come, but they have no power. The word of God says in Romans chapter 8 verse 31, I'm preaching right now. In Romans 8 31, the Bible says if God is for me, who can be against me? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6, it says, now we say with confidence that the Lord is my helper. What can man do unto me? I can go on and on and on with scriptures that tells you you should not be afraid. They will come out. The anointing over your life, the blessing of God over your life will attract the enemy. And so don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. You haven't done anything wrong. The enemy heard that God has blessed you. And now he's coming out in full force. Hallelujah. You are God's anointed. You are God's anointed. I'm going to say that one more time. You are God's anointed. The Bible says David had been anointed. They heard that he had been anointed. And they came out in full force. Do you know that the word anointing means, the anointed one means the chosen one. That's what it means. Christ was the anointed one. He is the anointed one. He is the chosen one. Do you know that God has chosen you? I can prove it for, to you in scripture. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, I don't think we have time to go there. The Bible says, 
that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are anointed. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Whether you feel it or not doesn't make, doesn't make a difference. Hallelujah. You are anointed. Anointed means you have been chosen. And God says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. If you believe that, wave your hands and shout hallelujah wherever you are. The Philistines were mad about David's success. The anointing over your life provokes God because God has chosen you, because God has put in his love over you. The enemy is mad about that. And you become a target. You become a target. You become the enemy's top priority. But I have good news for you. What is your response? Are you afraid when all hell breaks loose? The Bible says David heard about it. He heard about it and went out to meet them. Look at the boldness of David. Look at the boldness of this young man. The Bible says he heard about it. And instead of running away, instead of hiding away, instead of crying out to God in fear, the Bible says he heard about it and he went out to meet them. God is asking some of us this morning to stop hiding away in fear. Do not be afraid, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The battle is not yours, people of God. The battle is of the Lord. I don't know who this message is for this morning, but the Lord has said I should deliver it anyway to you. God says it's time for you to run out and meet what you have been afraid of. God says, I am with you. God says, stop hiding. God says, stop running away. God says, don't be afraid. David heard about it and went out to meet them. David confronted his enemies. It is time for you to confront the enemy of your soul. It is time for you to confront the enemy of your soul. The Bible says he heard about it and he went out to meet them. Hallelujah. Come on now, get up, dust your feet. Say, I am no longer running away from this problem. I am no longer running away from this solution. I am heading out to confront it in the name of the Lord. And as you go, the Lord will give you victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So we see in verse 8 that immediately David heard that they were coming. He said, oh, okay, you want to fight? Bring it on. Bring it. And he went out, and the Bible says he went out to meet them. He went out to confront them. But I want to take a pause here and tell you something unique and something really profound that you must, you must pay attention to. The Bible says that he, did, he didn't just go out to meet his enemies. He didn't right away go out and fight the Philistines. The Bible says he in, he in Inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. You must inquire of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 10, now, he said now, in, in verse 10, verse 10, he says, so David inquired of the Lord. He said, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? As you get ready to confront the enemy of your soul, before you head out to battle, you have to inquire of God. You have to go to the Lord in prayer. That's what we are doing this morning. We're going to spend some time praying, hopefully by the grace of the Lord. You're going to go to God in prayer because that is where you get your assurance. That is where you get your ammunition. That is where you get your victory. That is where you get your confirmation. Don't head out into battle against the enemy without inquiring of the Lord. You must go to God in prayer. You must go on your knees and say, God, this is what is before me. How do I go about it? I need your help, oh God, because we cannot help ourselves. If you go on your own, if you go by yourself, if you go without making inquiries, you will surely fail. Because listen to me, the battle is not yours. The one who is fighting the battle on your behalf is the Lord. Lord Jehovah himself. So you must inquire of the Lord. Today, as you inquire of the Lord, the Lord will answer you. Praise the Lord. The Lord will answer you. Praise the Lord. This is a good time to turn this into prayer. You're going to pray this morning. You're going to say, Lord, as I inquire of you today in prayer, deliver victory into my hands. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Whatever it is that is your situation, uh, what Whatever it is, this is our family month. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's finances. 
It could be a health issue. It could be your children. Whatever it is, as you go out and confront it, say, God, I bring my problems before you. I bring my situation before your hands. Jehovah, oh Lord of heavens, oh God of all the earth. You're going to say, Lord, I inquire of you today. Deliver victory into my hands. Look at what the Lord told him. The Lord answered and said, go I will deliver them into your hands. You need a word from the Lord today. As you inquire from God, God will answer you. God will speak to you. God will deliver his enemies into your hands. You will have the victory. You will come out with testimony. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God has delivered victory into your hands. As you inquire of him this morning, God will deliver the victory into your hands, just as he did for David. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I want to say something quickly here as well. As I was preparing for this message, the Lord began to deal with me. He said, there are some people in your midst that feel trapped. They feel trapped. They feel there's no way out again. They feel there is nothing else they can do. They've tried everything. I have a word for you this morning. Some of you feel trapped. You feel there's nowhere to go. God is sending deliverance your way. I remember the story in the book of Exodus chapter Chapter 14, verse 13. Let's look at Exodus 13, verse 14. And this was the episode where David, uh, where Moses found himself between the Red Sea and the armies of Pharaoh who were advancing towards him to defeat them. And the Bible says, Moses answered the people, don't be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. God bless you. God is going to hand deliverance into your hands this morning. If you believe that, say amen. God is going to deliver the Egyptians into your hands. Uh, I'm not talking about physical Egyptians. The Egyptians in this passage means anything that is the enemy, anything that is a threat to your life, anything that has been harassing you. God says, watch the Egyptians you see today, you will not see again. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, amen. So don't accept defeat. Praise the Lord. Don't accept defeat. Don't accept the status quo. God is waiting on you to make inquiries. This day, today, begin to make inquiries of the Lord. Say, God, what should I do about this situation? Don't keep quiet. He is ready to fight for you. Praise the Lord. Like David, God, he said, he asked God, will you deliver them into my hands? Ask the Lord, will you deliver this issue into my hands? Will you deliver this issue into my hands? Will you solve this problem for me? And God answered David emphatically. He says, yes, I will deliver them into your hands. I love, I always say this scripture, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God has not changed. He's the same God as he was for David. So he is today. He's not partial. He's not showing favorite to David, if he gave David an answer, he will also answer you in the name of Jesus. But you must inquire of the Lord. You must. You must. Don't go out there and fight on your own. Look for the inquiry of the Lord. Look for the for the for the act for for God's for God's affirmation. Look for God's okay to go ahead, and God will equip you for victory in Jesus' name. So, do you want? Do you what do you want delivered into your hand this morning? What do you want delivered into your hands? David said, "Will you deliver them?" I love that word. Will you hand them over? Hallelujah! That is an easy way to get your victory. Jesus said uh, that uh, He has given me all authority over all demons and all principalities in, in, in the heavenly places. And go therefore, and you will step on serpents and scorpions. Jesus has given you the authority. God is ready to deliver some things into your hands today. Only if you can inquire of them. I don't know what your inquiries are. I don't know what you need deliverance for. God says, I am ready to deliver those things into your hands. But you better ask the Lord. You better cry out in faith this morning. And as you do that, as you do that, God will give you your deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Let's look at Isaiah chapter 49, verse 2 to 3. We're still going to take some prayer points, but I'm doing some teaching this morning. Isaiah 49, verse 2 to 3. There was a scripture there that I, um, that I saw that really, really, really blessed me. Isaiah chapter 49, 49, sorry, not 43. Isaiah 49, verse 2 to 3. The Bible says, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He made my mouth. This is God speaking to, this is God and, and, and the prophet speaking through the, the spirit of the Lord. He said, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. Verse 3 says, he said to me, you are my servant Israel in whom I will display my splendor. Hallelujah. You're going to pray right now. You're going to say, God, I am your servant. You are a child of God. Israel represents the children, those who have received the heritage of the Lord. You are a child of God. You're going to say, God, according to this scripture, you would display your splendor in my life. Begin to pray this morning. That's a good place to pray. Say, God, I receive splendor. Display your glory. Clothe me with your splendor. Clothe my family with your splendor. Clothe my children with your splendor. Let the world see your hand upon my life. In everything I do, let your hand see your hand upon my life. Uh, just like Jabez prayed, he said, let your hand be upon me. That is your prayer this morning. Say, God, I receive splendor. I receive glory. I receive beauty for ashes in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to verse 2 again. He said, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword, comma, in the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He hid me. Praise the Lord. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. People of God, your mouth is a sharpened sword. Your mouth is a sharpened sword. As this is why you should inquire. As you go to God in prayer, your mouth, your words become a sharpened sword. Uh, praise the Lord. Your mouth becomes a weapon of vengeance. It becomes a weapon of offense against God's enemy. But you must use your weapon in prayer. You are not going to take a sword. You are not going to fight the Philistines physically. God is not asking you to go fight your enemies physically. The Bible says that the... the that, that the, the, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You're not fighting against, against flesh and blood. You are fighting against spiritual darknesses, spiritual forces you cannot see. So you don't need your fist in this fight. We don't need your character in this fight. What you need is your mouth loaded with the word of God. I hope you know that the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says that that the word of God is like a sword. The Bible talks about the sword of the spirit. So you're going to pray this morning. You're going to say God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to pray. You're going to say God in the name of Jesus. My mouth is a sharpened sword. I slice down. I chop down. I destroy. Use any word that comes into your head. That comes into your spirit. Begin to destroy. Begin to destroy the works of the enemy in your life. Begin to destroy the works of the enemy, the plans of the enemy in your family. In the name of Jesus. Say, God, I slice down with the word of God. You don't understand what I'm saying. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is why I am giving you all these scriptures, all these verses from the word of God, because this is is the sword that you need. You don't need anything else. There's nothing else that terrifies the enemy than the sword of the spirit, than the sword of the spirit. As you begin to declare God's word in prayer, it becomes a sword in your mouth that begins to tear down everything that the enemy has put in your life.
life. And we're going to go back to that prayer again. You're going to say, God, my mouth is a sharpened sword. I slice down in the name of Jesus. I chop down in the name of Jesus. I destroy every work of the enemy in my life. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. Praise the Lord. Begin to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. But I want to show you something else again in this scripture. Isaiah 49 verse 2. Let's go back there. The, sword, the, the God is not just, he's not just your weapon of offense, but he's also your weapon of defense. Look at what he says here. He says, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. Look at that word. He hides you. God is also hiding you. God will hide you. He says, he made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. Hallelujah. You are not just, you're not just a weapon of offense, but as you go after the enemy, God is also protecting you. You are going to come back with no injuries. You are coming back with victory. You will suffer no loss in the name of Jesus. Listen, Listen to me, in the last few weeks, it has been in my heart, impressed in my heart. I can tell that the enemy and the forces of darkness, they have unleashed their demons into the earth to begin to wreak havoc on the economy, to begin to wreak havoc in the lives of our young people, and to begin to wreak havoc in the lives of men and women. And we see we are surrounded by bad news, by calamities, but take heart because if God is for you, who can be against you? The Bible says those are with, who are with us are more than those who are against us. So begin to take God's word into your spirit. Begin to use the word of God as an offense in your life. Nothing else can work. The enemy is not scared of your fancy degree. He's not scared of your eloquence. Nothing scares him. Nothing defeats the enemy like the sword of the spirit. And that's why the Bible says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And begin to fight the enemy. Praise the Lord. So we see here in this scripture that God will hide you. He made you into a polished arrow and concealed you in his quiver. You're going to pray this morning quickly. You're going to say, God, hide me and my family in the name of Jesus. Hide me and my family in the name of Jesus. Hide me and my family. Begin to, God, you need to be hidden. There are some things coming your way that only God can hide you from. You can't hide yourself. Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. Only God God can provide safety for you. Ah, I don't know about you. I'm going to hide myself and my family in the in the in the, in the quiver of the Lord because when I'm in the in the quiver of the Lord, I am safe. The righteous run into it and they are safe. There is no safety outside of God. There is no safety from drugs outside of God. There is no safety from financial room outside of God. There is no safety from sickness and health and, and sickness and disease outside of God. There's no safety from untimely death outside of Jesus. You get my point. Begin to hide your family, yourself and your family in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because we are hid in Christ and Christ is hid in God. We hide ourselves in you. We hide our families in you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you're a sharpened sword. You are a sharpened sword. You are a polished arrow, but you are also protected in the shadow of his hands. He has concealed you in his quiver. And that is your testimony in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I'm going to be rounding up uh, very sh uh, shortly, but bear with me. Let's go back to our original text in the book of first Chronicles chapter 14. So we see that David was given victory. David was giving victory over the Philistines. The Bible says he, the Bible says he went, and David and his went and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there they defeated them. But the enemy came back. The enemy came back. They came back again. The enemy that was defeated came back. Hallelujah. The enemy came back. That is why we must be on guard. Listen to me, just because you experience victory in one area of your life doesn't mean that the enemy will not come back and try and test and attack you again. 
but you have to be on guard. It doesn't mean now that you have a testimony. That's the end of it. You must watch and pray. You must be on guard. You must be vigilant because the enemy is prowling around looking for every avenue. He was defeated yesterday, I know, but that doesn't mean you should abandon your altar of prayer and, and walk away because he will come back. Look at verse 13 of First Chronicles chapter 14. The Bible says once more, you see that word? Once more, that phrase there, once more, the Philistines raided the valley. They came back to attack. But I thought they were defeated. That's the enemy. He never gives up. He comes back time and time again. But you must be ready as well. The Bible says once more, the Philistines raided the valley. Verse 14, look at what David did. So David inquired of God again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And God answered him. And God answered him. So David inquired of God again. And God answered him. David did not say, well, it's the same enemy. I asked God last time, you know, and he delivered me. So let's go and do it again. No, David didn't take, didn't make any assumptions. David did not go ahead of himself. I would say, so David inquired of God again. That is what I'm trying to teach you this morning. You must always inquire of God. You must always inquire of God. No matter how many times the enemy comes, don't think you have mastered the enemy. Don't think you have mastered the devil. He's wise, he's a wise serpent. He is very cunning. He will come in different ways. Don't ever assume that you are too spiritual to go back to God to ask him for help. God is our very present help in time of trouble. Don't you ever, don't you dare go out there and face the enemy without asking God. It doesn't matter how many times you've asked him. Go back again. David inquired of God again. And God answered him. Then look, look, and this is why it's important to go back again and again and again. Because for every, for every encounter you have with the enemy, the strategy will change. God switched his strategy around this time. Said, and God answered and said, do not go directly after them. Remember in the first instance, David went directly and confronted the enemy. God says, no, this time, no. Uh, no. The enemy has, he, he knows your strategy. Let's switch things around a bit. Let me tell you something. In the place of prayer is the place of strategy. In the place of prayer is the place of direction. In the place of prayer is the place of divine, divine guidance. It does, listen, the fact that your neighbor next door did it this way in that business that you're also involved in doesn't mean it's going to work for you. You need your customized plan. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for each of your children. Don't use the same playbook that you use for this child, for the other child. Go to God in prayer for each child. God, how do I deal with Daniel? How do I deal with Jennifer? How do I approach this issue with Paul? You must go to God. You must ask him because he will give you strategies. He will give you divine guidance. And the Bible says, God answered him and said, do not go directly after them, but circle around them, attack them in front of the poplar trees. God gave him specifics. God gave him specific instructions. And some of us have experienced defeat. Some of us are experiencing frustration. Some of us are at the verge of giving up, not because God has left us, not because God is not on our side, but because we have not gone back to the Lord to inquire again. Never assume anything. This time around, God had a different strategy for David. In verse 15, he says, as soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine 
Amen. Divine direction and strategy. He inquired of God again. Don't assume anything. It doesn't matter how mundane it is. Don't assume anything. Listen, I, 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 I'm going to round up at this junction because I think the Lord is asking us to round up because I want to begin to, begin to just talk to God. In our home, we've been thinking this, you know, I'm going to share this with you, you guys are church family. This morning we were praying because we want to do some renovations in our home this summer. And we've been looking at different, you know, renovation, renovation companies. We're getting quotes from different people. You know, we're looking at what we need to get and what we need to buy. And there's so many choices, so many decisions to make. And the Lord began to speak to me this morning. He says, why don't you inquire of me what you need to do? Why don't you ask me so I can tell you which contractor you should use? Listen, God is ready. Even things as unspiritual, in quote, as renovations. They don't have any spiritual uh, effect. God is concerned about every aspect of your life. Every decision that you want to make, don't go on at it alone. Inquire of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. And when you do that, you're saying, God, I trust you because I know you know best. You can't know better than God. You can't see further than God. He, he knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning. And any traps that the enemy will set before you, because you've inquired of God, you begin to avoid those traps. Praise the Lord. This morning, begin to inquire of God. Whatever area of your life, whatever thing you're facing right now, begin to inquire of the Lord. Begin to make inquiries. That's what David did. That's what he did. Praise the Lord. And so, the Bible says, David's frame, he won. He won that battle again. And after he defeated them, the Bible says his fame spread throughout the land. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to, at this point, I'm going to stop this sermon. I want you to begin to pray. Wherever you are right now, in your bedroom, in your living room, in the hallway, maybe you're at the office or at the job, doesn't matter where you are. Begin to make inquiries. There are some things in your life that are at a standstill because you have not talked to God. Begin to open your mouth. Use the sword that is in your mouth, the word of God. Pray with the scriptures. Say, God, this is my issue. God, these are my pressing issues. God has not changed. Don't be deceived. God is still in the business of answering prayers. God is still in the business of delivering his people. He has not changed. Culture may change. Fashion may change. The times may change. But God, our God, is forever the same. He is the same always. His word never changes. And if he delivered David, he's ready to deliver you as well. But you have to make inquiries. Don't rush out to battle. Don't make that decision without asking God. Don't sign that contract without confirming from Jesus. Your kids are going off to college. Take it to God in prayer. You see my drift here. Anything that you want to do, inquire of the Lord. Get his permission. Get his approval. Because once you get his stamp of approval, you get your victory. Father, we thank you this morning for your people. Lord, we have received a word in season. We have received a timely word. Lord, I don't know who this word is for. I don't know. But you know all things. And your word has gone forth into the heart of the people. It has gone deep into their spirits. It has provoked, stirred up some things in their hearts. Those are the verge of making an ungodly, unwise decision. Lord, pull them back from the break. 
set them on the course of your plan. Set them on the course, on the road of your direction. Father will not miss it. Lord will not have regrets over decisions that we have made that have caused damage. Lord intervene in our lives today. As David cried out to you and you answered him, Lord answer our prayers today. Let our heavens be opened over us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you, don't turn your face away from us. That the Egyptians we see today, we shall see them no more. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray for a special grace upon your people today. A special grace. A special visitation. Some of you, God is going to speak to you this week. You will know because you will just know that God is speaking to you. And when you hear his voice, please obey. Please listen. Please comply. And as you do that, the Lord will reward your, your obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.